Kia ora team. So, three news stories into one today. I will leave a few articles in the description. You can go and read them, come to your own conclusions as usual. But firstly, we have finally a confirmed opponent for Joseph Parker on the Demetrius Andrade undercard in Providence in just under two weeks. Joe will be fighting Alex Leopai. The rumours that were circling about Molina dropping out of the race and Leopai stepping in place were all true and we have it confirmed now. So 39 year old Leopai, very much faded but still very durable, hasn't been in a real fight since he was at Malik Scott in what 2016 so I don't know how good he's going to be I don't know if he's still going to be as durable um, he's had a couple of fights against um, a very low level journeyman in I uh, can't remember his first name Eisen Ritty um, one split decision draw I think it was and then he knocked him out second time round so don't know how much he's going to have in the tank but maybe good to see Alex get a decent payday before he fades off into the sunset um, I'm not the happiest fan about Joe fighting Leopai I was not that happy about him fighting Molina either I want to see Joe in some really great competitive fights but I don't know maybe Joe not being in the ring since December last year does need a bit of a tune up to shape some rust off I think he should be able to get rid of Alex Leopold rounds 5 to 7 somewhere there probably a referee stoppage due to too much punishment maybe even a towel getting thrown in I'm not sure but um, either way it's good to see Joe back in action again he still wants to fight 3 times this year so a fight now, fight September, October, and then another one in December would be great to see. Um, and a step up in the level of competition for the last two would be awesome. So we'll see what happens. But um, you can catch that fight in New Zealand. Uh, I'm sure it'll be broadcast on Sky. Possibly even pay-per-view down here, which is not surprising. But... Um, It'll be on the zone as well, so be tuned for that. The second story I'd like to talk about is Tony Yoka is coming back from a uh, ban in France. Anyway, I'll I'll say that he missed a few drug tests, and the French uh, authorities ban him for a year for missing tests. He could have gone and got a boxing license from somewhere else and boxed, but he didn't. So he's back now anyway. He hasn't been in the ring since he fought Dave Allen back in June of last year. And um, it'll be interesting to see where he's at at the moment. His opponent is going to be Alexander Dimitrenko, which isn't too bad of an opponent really. And I think... A lot of us seem to forget because Tony Yoka is the 2016 um, Olympic gold medalist. We tend to forget that he's only five fights into his professional career. So Alexander Dimitrenko is your sixth fight is a pretty decent level, really, uh, and a considerable step up from Dave Allen as well so yeah not a bad fight whatsoever that fight will be on july 13th in athens greece so not sure where we'll get to watch that yet if at all but um it's definitely confirmed and he is also looking to fight three times this year he's looking to fight somebody on a date in october sometime and he's also looking to take on Johan Duopa at the very end of the year so that'll be an all French affair that's a pretty damn good fight depending on his next opponent after Dimitrenko 
I guess he's going to be catching up to a lot of the other prospects that went pro around the same time as him, like the likes of Joe Joyce, Philip Hergovic, Yevgeny Romanov, uh, Alexander Tezlenko. All those guys are in at least one of the governing body's top 15s at the moment. Tony Yoke is nowhere to be seen so far, but he's only five fights and so be interesting to see how he goes for the rest of the year. He's a very good boxer. He's got a lot of skill. And he's a heavyweight, so I'm sure he can pop somewhat as well. Um, but I'm very interested to see how his career is going to go. I'd like to have him in my um, top prospects list, but he just hasn't been active enough. So we'll see how he goes. And uh, maybe I'll put out a prospect list at the end of the year. Now the last story I'd like to talk about was one that kind of went under the radar. I think it was last year, it was last year, there was a fight between two Canadian heavyweights. One unbeaten at the time who was 15-0 and Simon Keane and he was going to be taking on Dylan Carmen. Now everybody I spoke to expected Simon Keane to get rid of Dylan Carmen. But Simon King got knocked the fuck out. So I don't know whether it was a case he didn't take Carmen seriously or he didn't prepare properly or what, but for me, Simon King should have won that fight. But Dylan Carmen went on to fight Yevgeny Romanov and he got knocked the fuck out. So after that, he's come back for a rematch and this was last weekend. It happened. Simon King and Dylan Carmen had a rematch. And Dylan Carmen got knocked the fuck out in round three. So things set back to where they should be. Uh, very interesting. I still haven't been able to find any footage of that. Um, if anybody knows where to find some footage of Dylan Carmen versus Simon King, leave a message in the description. I, I'll very much appreciate anybody who can find me some footage of that fight. So Simon King moves on. And uh, he still has that loss on his record, but you can learn a hell of a lot from a loss, and I think he must have. So, interesting. All right, so drop your comments about what you think of Parker versus Leopai. Also, Tony Yoka versus Alexander Dimitrenko. And like I said, if you can, if you've got a link or any way of watching the. Simon Keane versus Dylan Carmen second fight. Uh, much appreciate any information on that. Looking forward to reading your comments. Don't forget to give me the thumbs up if you have enjoyed this video. Subscribe to the channel and I will catch you in the next one. Big Boys Boxing, we out. So. Have you been working with Joseph Parker right here? What do you think of him? He just um, signed with his own and I know he's fought after Joshua is one of the top guys. How's it been working with him? Pretty good. You know, it's the second time I came in camp here with uh, with Joe. We know 10, 10 years ago now because we fought in amateurs, me and him. And uh, now he's a, he's a really good guy and a really good fighter. You know, he's really fast. He's a guy got skilled for a heavyweight. So he's he's 26 years old, still young. And uh, he will definitely be one of the top uh, heavyweight of the next year. And in the UK, we got a big fight next month. Your yeah. old uh, rival, uh, yeah. uh, Joe Joyce, taking a step up, fighting a crafty veteran in Brian yeah. Jennings. What do you think of that fight? He has to take a step up. You know, he's, I think he's older than Tyron Fury. So. Yeah. <laughs> So you have like to, you got, yeah, you got you to rush. So uh, yeah, he's fighting Brian Jennings. It's going to be a good fight because both of them have uh, their ability, their skills. And uh, I can't see who's going to win. Uh, I just want to see like a good fight because Joe is uh, just trying to uh, to go like far and, and up in the ranking now. What about you? You recently signed with Jay Prince. Yeah. What do you got going on? I got my next fight uh, July 13th against, uh, yeah, against Dimitrenko. Uh, yeah, really good fight because his last fight was against Ruiz. So uh, I think by the end of the year we uh, will be on the on the top ten. I fought Dimitrenko in July. I got another one in September, and I uh, will finish the the year with uh, with Johan uh, De Hopas, who also fought Deontay Wilder. So uh, yeah, we just want to move forward. And next year we're gonna fight everybody. I think like Tyler Shaw next year. How surprised were you that Andy Ruiz knocked out after Joshua? 
everybody was surprised. You know, I think everybody was surprised, but boxing is boxing and heavyweight is dangerous. So uh, I was surprised, shocked as everybody else. But Ruiz, Ruiz is a good fighter. He had um, good skills, fast hands. And uh, most of the people was uh, was thinking it was a joke, and it wasn't. Because uh, you got you have to know that boxing is not about muscle. And now everybody know it. Look at Tyson Fury. He's, he doesn't have no abs, but he's the best fighter in the world right now. So you think he's better than Wilder right now? Yeah, even for the, the first match, you know, I, ca I commented on the, on the French TV, and uh, for me, Tyson won 100. percent And now he's definitely better than he was last year. So for the rematch. I think Tazzy will want easily. I was going to say now he's in another training camp, yeah. uh, better. He had to lose 150 pounds. Yeah. How much do you think he's at his peak now, or do you think he can even still get better? No, he can, he can get better. I think for Tazzy, it's just a matter of uh, stay busy, stay busy, stay in camp, and uh, he got everything heavyweight can can want. You know, he's tall. He got the reach. He got skills. He can switch. He can bust south path. He can knock people out. And, but at the end of the day, as I told you, boxing is boxing. Just one shot, and he can go down. Can Joshua recover? Could he win the rematch, or do you think mentally? No, he, he definitely will recover. You know, I know him. Uh, he's a champ at the end of the day. Maybe uh, he did a mistake. He lost his fight. Every, everybody trying to say that uh, Joshua lost the fight, but I want to say that Ruiz won. And uh, that's totally different. Joshua will, will work hard, and uh, he will want to have his belt back in, uh, in the UK, so you have to watch it.